This is completely unacceptable, but they're nice as pie to your face. No idea why. That'll be enough to wind him up on the journey. On eBay, it's not the best place to buy tools, admittedly, and there's a reason why, that I'm not prepared to spend any more money on it. Hopefully, penis enlargement plan or something. <laughs> He's there going oh like, ah, oh, daddy. I have no idea what hit it so hard. Big J on the case. I'm gonna use a Ribena bottle. I didn't pay for them. No, I can tell you didn't, mate. I'll be under a rock for another six, at least minimum six months, yeah. Right, everybody welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for tuning back in. We've got a strange one this morning. This used to be one whole building and it was split into flats. Now, this studio flat here, where Jay's head is, I have to work with him every day. But that little studio flat, for some reason that we don't know why, the fuse board is out in the communal hallway. Now, it's got a front end RCD and there's only a couple of circuits. Tenant moved out, we came in, checked it, everything's fine. Fuse randomly tripped over the weekend for some reason. I don't know why. And we came here, we've been here three or four times now, and it's absolutely fine. Everything works as it's supposed to. But it's like, how much time do you, how much time do you commit to trying to get to the bottom of a problem that just may, that just may or may not be there? Everything's working as it should. Of course, the problem was the RCD tripped on the weekend and she was moving out. Freezer, obviously melted, but you come back here, we've reset it and everything's fine. So, I mean, what caused it? Who knows? And how much time do you d spend trying to get to the bottom of a problem that may not actually be there? So, we've been here every day resetting it, haven't we? And it's, we've been here every day checking it and it's been absolutely fine. So, yeah, I don't know. I've reset it. Why did it just trip? What just happened? Right, this is what we're on about. Right, okay, hang on. What happened? You walked out and it was on because that light was on. For some reason, that flat feeds that one communal light. No idea why. I'll tell you what it might be. The latch on this Hager board when you close it, it presses the trip button on the RCD. What a dumb design is that? Oh. <laughs> Hager, that is not an acceptable design. What's that all about? Fuck's you close the door. Actually, to be fair, hang on. Yeah, this is loose, that's why. And it was sitting that way. When you close it, <laughs> it trips the RCD. All right, okay. All right, so there is no fault in this flat. We just need to tighten that up. We just need to get a screwdriver out of the van, tighten that up, and that sorts that problem. Good, okay, so let's fix that, <laughs> let's fix that problem. Um, what we'll do, if we try and get into the basement flat, let's see if we can do the repairs there. We haven't actually asked. Your problem is, this is with, like, with rentals and stuff, you've got to give them like 24 hours notice to come in, but they never, you meet. I know, but you, you email them and they don't reply, so it's just easiest to knock on the door. But the problem is when you knock on the door and say, look, can we get in? They'll say, absolutely, yeah, fine, no problem. And then they email the, the landlord, they email the estate agent saying, this is completely unacceptable, but they're nice as pie to your face. Let's see if we can get in. We're here now, let's try and finish this You're block. You're the face of Thomas Nagy, so you can go down and talk to him. Such a pisser. Watch this, watch this. Oh, per yes, yeah. that'll be enough to wind him up on the journey. He's not going to crash, don't worry. I'm sure you'll hear about that when we get to the job. When we went to America, we got COVID somewhere on the plane going out there. And for most of the trip, I had COVID. And then when I came back, no, on the way back, Penny then caught it as well. So we both had it. And it's cleared up now. I'm negative, but I've got this cough. I cannot shift. It just, <coughs> it's just a throaty cough. And it just, it's completely useless. Nothing comes up but I just can't shift it. I've had it for a month now. I just I cannot shift this cough. And I don't want to see a doctor about it because they're just going to say, wait, so I don't know what to do. I'm just going to have to put up with it. But anyway, yeah, we're going down to um, Putney now. Uh, we've got some outdoor sockets we've got to go and fit in a garden and we've got a light in a carport, I believe, there we've got to fit as well. So the next scene you see will be us down there. Yeah, first set of lights, Jay put his visor down. I'll play the clip, <laughs> I'll play the clip now. I was thinking, why are these pens dropping on me? Because you've moved them above my fucking visor. It's war, lad. It's war. <laughs> Jay's not happy because his van hasn't got AC. Because most, most transits, they just don't have it. They just, for some reason, it was an extra. They just nobody ever bought for some reason. I don't know why. And I've spent so much money on that, under that engine, under that hood, that I'm not prepared to spend any more money on it. 
My van's got AC, so we're gonna do rock, paper, scissors. Who drives the cherry picker home? First to three, yeah? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. <laughs> yes, one nil, one nil, one nil. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. One, one, one. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Two, one, two, one. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. That's a shit game, mate. It's a shit game. No, that was just, that was like just confirming that we're gonna decide. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that's the thing, those little, those tags on the back, you gotta get some of those for your bags. That was, I made, that made <laughs> literally no sense, did it? I've gotta carry my bag like this, cause I've broken the, the sort of my bag's breaking. Right, what else do we need? Cable, sockets, we've got everything. Right, I'll see you in the job. We're in this weird hybrid state at the moment where we're doing we do this stuff during the day, and then like this week, thurs Thursday night, yeah, Thursday night, we're working, we're working road. So it's weird, like we're doing a bit of domestic, a bit of highway, a bit of domestic, it's a weird check. But I didn't wanna, there was conversation in one of my last videos where I was talking about, do I bin off the domestic stuff? And I was thinking about it, and the more I think about it, I, I don't want it, because it takes you years to build up those clients, and it's a shame to bin it off, you know? And also you shouldn't put all your eggs in one basket. So I think we're gonna keep it going for a bit and it's nice to have the variation. But anyway, I digress. We're in a garden in uh, South London. We've got a whisker box there with power and we've got to get a double socket over there behind that seating area. So apparently the landscapers have just finished and they've left a duct there. Apparently, that bit of rope, apparently there's a duct there which runs underneath the garden. So we're gonna, we've got some 2.5 high tough, so we're gonna run this in, hopefully, if the duct isn't blocked or anything, to where that fence ends just there. That's the plan. I was surfing Tinterweb the other night, and I, on eBay, it's not the best place to buy tools, admittedly, and there's a reason why. Because I bought, there was a guy selling like 10 packs of these accelerator bits, and these Armeg ones are, they're fantastic. There is no better for drilling sheet steel and plastic and stuff. These are brilliant. And I like that they've got the hex head on them. So you can put them in an impact, you can put them in a drill, and you can put them on those on your tool bag as well. Those things down there. You can just clip them straight on and bang, they're super easy to take off and you can work really fast. Downside is because they're so small, you do lose them really easily. It doesn't, you haven't got to, you know, if you just put it down somewhere, if you're not paying attention, you'll leave it there. But anyway, I digress. The point was, I bought like, I was it seven, five or seven packs, and I've just opened this pack. Both of them are 25 mil cutters, there wasn't a 20 in it. So there's obviously a reason that you get stuff cheap on eBay, but they are really good. If you buy them from a, like cities or somewhere, they're well worth buying. Yeah, so basically, <laughs> in my last video, episode 11, the, there was a fella um, who who left a comment saying, there's some bad blood between Jimbo and Tom, you can tell. That was Brad H. I think a lot of people just like to stir stuff that doesn't exist just to create something. Um, so we're gonna put that to bed right now. We have a group chat here, and we do we slag each other off loads in this group chat. Um, but let me just give him a little ring. Mr. Cheese. Mr. Cheese, uh, you kind of, you're, dis you're disproving my theory. We're actually recording at the moment and I just wanted to ring you to, to just confirm that there's no bad blood because it only takes one person in the comments to say there's bad blood and everyone believes it. So I was just, but you just, you've literally picked up the phone calling me a lanky cheese string. So <laughs> <laughs> how's life up in Wales? Busy. Busy. Why, what are you up to? Busy. I'm actually in a school at the moment. Oh, so Jay would love that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, just cracking on. Um, well, well, people are saying now in the comments, they I don't like you. Yeah, I know. I mean, I know we we slay each other. I called you a Welsh twat earlier, but I mean, generally we're okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're not you're not you're not helping the cause, mate. You need to sound a little more. You need to sound a little more convinced. It's fine. I'm sure everybody gets the gist. Yeah, no, that's that's fine. You're busy for a change. Yeah, for a change, cheeky bastard. We're all right. Yeah, we're in a guy. I mean, Jay's working quite hard today, which makes a change. Camera guy's doing fuck all as usual. But I mean, generally, that's yeah. Quite easy. You remembered the camera, to be honest with you. No, nah, to be fair, I mean, the other day he turned up. Camera guy didn't even. He didn't even have his camera with him. Yeah, he wasn't even a camera guy. He was just a guy because he didn't have his camera. So yeah, but we're managing with him. I mean, he's actually, you know, he's going off to 
soon because he's found a, a job doing engineering and for some reason oh he's got it now isn't he yeah 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 he's got his job at dyson so he's he's moving over there and uh i'm gonna have to find a new camera guy because obviously he just you know that's it you'll be under a rock for another six months i'll be under a rock for another six at least minimum six months yeah six but, months that's a minimum that yeah is. anyway i've got to go because we've got a job here that i've got to get on with so because nobody else is doing anything here so Apart yeah, from Jay's working that's a true. bit hard today, he's putting in a bit of effort. I don't believe that's one thing I don't believe, to be honest with you. <laughs> Alright, love you lots, my handsome. I'll see you later. Uh, Alright, cheers, buddy. Yeah, so he answers the phone, so there's no beef. Whatever anybody thinks, there's no beef. Right, we've got a socket in here. I'm going to keep it quite low down, actually, probably somewhere there. And there's another one going over there behind that bush. So let me throw these in now quickly. Yeah, and basically behind you there's a duct and there's another duct here. So we just pulled all the cabling in through the ducts and it just rises out the ground here. Sockets will go on there. Happy days. So, Jay, yes. how are you getting on today? Not bad, mate, not bad. You having fun? Love it, love Fantastic. it. Fantastic. So my question for you today is, what do you think of Jimbo the electrician? Oh. <laughs> Where to start? Where <laughs> to start? Quality lad. Okay. He gets a bit touchy when you're a bit of banter, right? Mm, okay. He, you know he does, he gets a little yeah. bit touchy, but that's his only flaw. He goes in for the neck. He doesn't like to play it out mm -hmm. for the long game like we all do. He just goes in and just does <laughs> ya. Which is, it makes it even more funny for us. <laughs> but overall, he's a 9 out of 10. For, for nothing sexual. I don't know what you, you guys think this is. It's not sexual. But he's a good lad. He is a proper good lad. So what we're doing now is this is the feed which goes out to the sockets over there, so which is on a 20 amp breaker in the board. You filming? Mm -hmm. No, he's just standing there with the oh, camera, Daddy. mate. Hello, mate. Yeah, I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Aren't we all, lad? <laughs> yeah. Who's that? He's there going I'm like, oh, Daddy. Yeah. Random guys just walked in and Jay's just walked off now talking to him. So yeah, we've got a supply from there going over to the sockets, and I'll show you in the in the carport area quickly. My lethargic sense coming through is so hot, it's really warm, it's difficult to concentrate. All right, that'll do for now. Right, pack this up, and I'll show you in there. So, double socket down there, half a 20 amp break comes up here to a few spare, which then goes, that fuses it down three amps to the light switch, two-way light switch goes up to a light fitting right above your head and that will go down to another light switch at the end of the walkway down there so we can turn it on either end of the walkway. <laughs> Working in the garden and I don't know, Jehovah's Witnesses or somebody, I don't know who it was, like, are asking for money and like Jay's signing up to it. I, and they, they always say like, oh, we're only going to take up like two minutes of your time, like 40 minutes later, you know. I don't know if you can see them, but... I have no idea what he's signing up to. We're going to have to quiz him in a minute and see what he's... Maybe he's signed up for penis enlargement plan or something. <laughs> We've got all these barriers on the back of the van for a job this week. They're literally, they're going to be like a bowed like a banana. No, I can tell you didn't, mate. When you squeeze these down, they crack in the middle. This is what's happening. Maybe we've got to stack them upright because I think that's how they normally transport them, isn't it? There's always a reason. Mate, last time we had no problem. I came from Portsmouth to these one day and they were stacked up to here. I had no issue. When I picked them up from Portsmouth, I had like... You had a stack of 20, I no, yeah. I had no issues until he put these there. All right, well, we can put them on the top or something tomorrow. Great Ormond Street you just signed up to. Tenner a month? Uh, no, a couple of good months. Tenner a month. Yeah, That's £9.50 to a manager somewhere to put a fuel in his car and 50p to the actual cause. Can you tell I'm not a believer in charity? The thing is, the thing is right, I can cancel it anytime. You can. As soon as you set up the dread debit, you can just cancel it, yeah. Right, anyway, we will see you in the morning. Um, yeah, so we'll see you at this column change. Yeah, I'm buying the drinks. You haven't put, your, you haven't put a 
hand in the pocket for the last few weeks, Thomas. You fucking believe him. He is so far. Me, me and the cameraman have bought drinks, lunch, dinner, cinema tickets. I'd like to point out, out next week, right, I'm paying for his test and inspection course, his accommodation, his fuel, all his food, cheeky bastard. And I want Crown Plaza, yeah. fucking travel lodge is what you're gonna get. All right, everybody, it's the next day. Now, uh, this is a job which I've just come to have a look at. Uh, I've actually got to, uh, I've got to put a price in for it, but uh, it's just a, I don't even know how it's been bent. Basically what's happened, you've got a five meter column and somehow it's bent. This is the weak spot, this bit here on a column. And there are marks here. It's like someone's reversed into it or something. And it's bent that the force of it, it's just, it's the length of that bit, it's just caused it to bend here. Because there's no damage on the t this upper part of the column. But there are marks here. I don't even know how someone's, maybe it was on a, I was gonna say like one of those ride on mowers or something, but you'd have to hit that with a hell of a speed. But anyway, it's bent the column and it's gotta be changed. So it's not too bad of a job, to be honest. They can isolate the power in there, which is good because on some columns, there's a place over in Highgate and there's like eight columns there to change and it's, um, it's fed directly from the street and there's no cut up, there's no way of isolating any of the columns in the street. So this one isn't too bad, you can just switch it off inside. But just lift the column out, drop a new column in and just bed it in and happy day. So you may see that coming up. I just wanted to pop out, this, this came through by email, I just wanted to pop out and have a look at it just to get some measurements. It's a five, yeah, five meter column. But I'm gonna go and chat to the head honcho and just see what, uh, what he wants on the top of the column LED wise. So he's hit it so hard, it's blown the, it's literally broken the lamp inside the fitting. I have no idea what hit it so hard. Pass, I don't know. But that may well be coming up in content in the next few weeks while it's summer holidays. Nice little job though. But anyway, we're gonna go and chat to the head honcho. I'm gonna leave this here for a second. Next scene you see will be over in a job we're working, doing some outside lighting in Hampstead. I think that's gonna be the next job. So I'll see you over there. <laughs> literally nearly dropped the microphone set up straight in the pond. I'm having to do it like this because it looks so, it looks so weird. It's the only one we've got because I got out the truck earlier. We were just getting coffee from Macca's and as I got out the truck, I, you know how you see I have the lav and I have a spool of it here. That spool always catches stuff and I got out the truck and just ripped it. I ripped the microphone clean out. So it was like 80 pounds of lavalier mic gone. So we've got this backup one, which the camera guy keeps in his bag as a spare. So I'm doing it news reporter style today. Basically what we've got, we've got this pond here. Now, apparently there are two lights in this pond. We're never going to know if they're switched on because you're not going to see through all the algae. But this pump, we had to get this pump working again. Fuse are blown, replace the fuse, and it seems to be okay now. It's, I can't hear it, but you can hear it. You can feel it vibrating. So it's working. These lights we're putting in, he did have some old 12 volt spikes, which we've pulled out uh, just because there were the old MR16 transformers in these boxes. We're just pulling the transformers out and we're just going to put these mains voltage spikes in instead, which I think is just a cleaner way of doing it. And there's this wireless control box, one of these wise boxes. I've got no idea what that, is, that was powering. It might be the lights in the bottom of this pond, actually. I think we said that, wasn't it? That might be for the lights in the bottom of the pond, but we don't know if they're working. So we're just going around slowly and we're just... Uh, taking all these 12 volt uh, tool spikes out and putting these mains voltage ones in. I just gutted, I've ruined a perfectly good microphone. I'm really annoyed with myself. It's one of those things for weeks, I was like, you're gonna damage it and yeah. Should have listened to myself to be honest, but never mind. Six and a half hours later. All right, everybody, now it is about nine-ish, about nine, somewhere around there, about nine o'clock. We've come up to Warwickshire for some car park lighting up here, which we're working on. These columns are so cool. So these columns, it's a solar, it's basically the, the lanterns themselves are solar powered and the batteries are stored in the columns. And you've got solar power, you've got the solar panel three quarters of the way, about three quarters of the way up the column. But absolutely such an incredible, I mean, they're so interesting. I'll come, come up in the boom and I'll show you quickly while I'm here. Yeah, basically what we're doing here is just, uh, it's an intermittent service on the photo cells, just making sure they're operating correctly. Because what these do is so cool. These work because they're solar, they don't come on all the time. The way they've designed it is that in this whole car park, as cars drive past, that they illuminate, and then after a minute or so, they dim down again. But the range on the photos, on the PIRs is brilliant. I'll show you later. They haven't come on yet because it's not quite dark enough. This here is a solar panel. You've got this panel wrapped all the way around on every column. 
I mean, okay, it's not cheap, but isn't it such a, a beautiful, I mean, it's a beautiful design, don't you think? I really think it's a nice design. I'll show you the light head quickly, just for the sake of it. So these are the, the LED head. So it's pretty standard. You've got the LED head and then it's a PIR and a photo cell built into here. They're not coming on just yet. Give it maybe another half hour and I think they'll start coming on. None of yeah, there's a lady down there walking and she hasn't activated any of them. It might be a bit dark for filming, but we'll give it'll be worth it. It'll be nice for you to see how they all come on in, in harmony as you drive along. It's such, I really, it's so impressive. If you've seen anything like this, put it in the comments below and let me know where you've seen it because this is one of the first places I've ever, I've ever seen this. I've never seen solar powered lanterns, but with the solar pack built into the column, I've not seen it, but it's a really cool idea. But if you've seen it, put it down below and let us know. Yeah. All right, so we just wait until it gets dark just to test the photocells and stuff. And they're all turning on as they're supposed to. But the idea is now is that they stay on dimly all night. So they stay on at like 50% lux, like whatever it is they stay on. And then when you walk under them, they go to 100% brightness. So it should, theoretically. Yeah, there you go. And then it just brightens up again. So it's a cool idea, and then after a minute or so, it dims down again. It's great technology. This is actually, I was speaking to the guy, so apparently these are manufactured in, no, they're, I think the office of this company is based in Austria, and they're designed, yeah, they're designed in Austria, and this is the fourth generation. Yeah, so they stay on for about 30 seconds or so before they dim down. And this is the fourth generation of column. So the first, they had Gen 1, this is Gen 4 apparently. All right, so we've waited until it's completely dark now. You'll see the effect of it now. When I walk up to it, you'll see it come from medium setting right up to high level. This whisker gel, this stuff that you buy here, and the idea is it comes in two liquids. You pour two liquids together. You've seen me do it many times on the channel. You pour the liquids together, stir it, and then you pour it into a, you pour it into a whisker box. And it, this is what it forms. It just turns into a gel, stretchy gel. But the idea is it gives a waterproof connection to outdoor fittings like this to try to reduce tripping issues and stuff. But it says on the label that it's re-enterable. So it's like, I don't know, you, you, you can pull it out and then, I don't really see how this is re-enterable. Do you know what I'm on about here or am I, I don't know? Because it does say re-enterable, but you can't push this back into the box. So I don't really understand. It's easy just to mix some fresh stuff up and pour it in. Bit of outside lighting this morning, RCD tripping. Someone's cut through, probably a strimmer or something, it's cut through one of those wires. We've got Big J on the case. Double R, mate, double R. If we're looking a bit knackered, it's because we are, because we were in that, oh, we were at that job last night, actually, in Warwickshire, yeah. We were there till... And I was in bed. Nice. Yeah, you nice were tucked up, tucked up. We were uh, there till, what time, half 10-ish? About half 10-ish, and we got back at about quarter to one and it's now eight o'clock in the morning and we're working overnight tonight as well, aren't we? Fun times. Because Tom took this last time and he's lost the cup, I'm gonna use a Ribena bottle. And before anyone says I'm using too much, I ain't paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't see it from my ass, mate. I'd never said that in my life. <laughs> Today, I, did, I found the problem, Tom didn't. So, super spark my ass. He's gonna kill me when he sees this. Mm. And then there'll be someone going, oh, you're not done it right, it's grass in it. <laughs> <laughs> He's been slating you off, mate. Would I do such a thing? Of course you fucking would, wouldn't, mate. Not a chance. I value our friendship. What's. <laughs> What's going on there, mate? mate because That's... they weren't full bottles. Mate, bottles, but have we again? explained to the camera what happened? What's that? <laughs> it's not exactly. <laughs> they weren't new bottles, mate. <laughs> they were not new bottles. Were they not? No. Because you never give me. You always take the good stuff, and then whatever you don't use, you give back to me. Talking suck. Really. <laughs> Still waiting for my vargos. Vargo, can you give us some Vargos? Just finished. And if anybody wants to send us anything... 40 quid a litre. What did I say earlier? <laughs> and before anyone says I'm using too much, I ain't paying for it. Could we take off another box and pour this in another box somewhere? I'm not wasting this. We could. <laughs> Just I'll do it. I'll do it. Mutiny in the ranks. 
Yeah. Oh dear. Oh sorry, dear. mate. It's on your hand. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> mate. And uh, I'm so sorry, mate. You don't want to waste nothing now. Sorry, buddy. That's all right. I'll that's back, that's rotten when that happens. I'll get you back, that's just it's rotten. <laughs> Whenever you are ready. This is going to be a new video, isn't it? Yeah. Traitorous prick. <laughs> yes. don't, don't try and like pretend this that you care thing. now. Don't yeah? Care. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? He's off. Are you recording now? Yeah. Because you're leaving, you're a dickhead. And you yeah. You're a fucking dickhead. You can put that in your blueprint. Just because he wants, to he wants to pursue a career in. Yeah. Fucking, he doesn't know the word cleaning, does he? Yeah. Can't see it from my house. That is not the attitude. <laughs> that is not the attitude. Camera guy don't give a shit, does he? You don't care. He's like, get on with it, Tom. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll leave this off. We just we just lost love for you, mate, that's all. <laughs> so much for finishing this block today. <sighs> see, this is there, what mate. the camera guy does. Just trashes everything. Mate, my name's Tom, aka Tarquin. Sparky knife. The rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. And then shoot. So the, yeah. But you went faster yeah. than him. Yeah. All right, okay, oh, we'll start again. Scissors, all right, all right. Shoot. Right, we'll start again. Right, ready. So. And Tom, you thought putting the old pens on my sunfires was funny. I'll give you that. It was shit. <laughs> but I will get you back and you won't like it. Tom, I literally has just gone to buy some drinks. So, we're like, winning for once. He hasn't bought anything for a fucking, how long has it been, man? We wow. bought lunch yesterday, the day before. Mm. Friday, Saturday, went for dinner. We'll be buying it, we're sponsoring him, bruv. Anyway. What do you reckon he got you? Uh, I reckon we're gonna get like, one of those like, 35p Calypso drinks. And he's gonna get like some Pellerini wine or something, or like a bottle of water. Or like that. <laughs> My barber's not home yet from his holiday, so I've still got a dead trim. Hopefully soon. <laughs> one, two, three, one, two, three. Go for it. <laughs> the weirdest microphone setup in the world. I don't know how. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to be possible, mate. We'll try, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Ten past nine and we're in the cafe and we're finished work for the day. Well, we haven't finished work for the day, <laughs> we're just, just having a little breather, you know?